What I have before me is a gastroscope. This particular one is made by Olympus. It is their GIF H180J. It has a working length of about 103 centimeters. It has um, a diameter. Uh, the scope insertion tube diameter is 9.9 .9 millimeters. It has a working channel that uh, goes through the scope to put instruments through and to suck up fluids that is 2.8 millimeters in diameter. What I'm holding is the bending section. The bending section is the most delicate part of the scope. It's the one most prone to damage. It has a very flexible rubber covering over it, or vinyl covering perhaps. Uh, this last little bit right here, the last like three quarters of an inch, is actually the camera. There is a built, there is a camera and a lens array in the very tip. Um, down here, you'll see uh, these two knobs. One is for left and right. The other one is for up and down. If we uh, want to, we can make this scope turn around and look back down on itself, kind of like in a candy cane. Uh, so we can look and see behind us while we're in there. Also, over these control knobs, there's a locking or break with each one. And these are, uh, when we store these, they should always be in the free position. Uh, but uh, if you're trying to hold an angle, or the doctor is trying to hold an angle inside the patient, he will push these brakes and it will keep it in the same position. When we uh, process the scope afterwards, we always make sure they're back in the free position. And we'll straighten this one out again. All right, I just mentioned that uh, this uh, handle, uh, also known as control handle right here, has the uh, angulation knobs and it also has a port here where a air water valve goes in here. What that does is it allows air, or we use CO2, uh, to insufflate the area that we're trying to look at, to make, to uh, put a, a gas, we used to use air, but we use CO2 now to kind of inflate the organ we're looking at, whether it's a stomach, or a small bowel, or esophagus, whatever. So this uh, finger control here enables us to do that. When we push this in all the way, what it does is there's a little nozzle you can't really see, but I will show some stills of it. A little nozzle here that sprays off the lens of the camera. And by spraying off the lens of the camera, it keeps, it, keeps things clear so we can see where we're going. This, uh, so that's what the air water valve does. This valve here uh, goes in this upper port, and it's used for suction. And by pressing in on this button during the procedure, we can suck or aspirate fluid from the tip of the scope to a suction valve to kind of keep, keep things cleaned up. The uh, other thing that goes on here is this is called the working channel of the scope. Like I said it was 2.8 millimeters. This little port here is also known as a biopsy port. And this little cap or valve goes onto that port like so, and it has a cap. And uh, the nice part about this valve or cap here is we can push instruments through the top part, even if this is closed. And when it comes out here the other end, the gases that we're insufflating the, uh, the uh, bowel or organ or stomach or whatever it with uh, won't escape. So we can keep things insufflated even when we're pushing uh, instruments in and out of the scope. Um, for some instruments, we open this up to put them down because they're a little bit bigger. 
but that's what this is for. Then we have, this is called a credit card valve. It's blue, and it's nicknamed that simply because it looks like it's attached to a credit card. When we're cleaning the scope, it's gonna go into the air water valve here, so we're gonna press it and the suction valve together when we're cleaning the scope. Uh, we'll go through the scope cleaning later, uh, but it, it, it enables uh, a 30% increase in the amount of fluid that is able to be sucked up through the scope. So in this case, we'll be using this when we suck detergent through the scope before it goes into the manual cleaning mode. On the other end of the scope, right here, we call this the electrical connector. Um, if you, I don't know if you can see very well there, but I'll show you better pictures, still pictures. In the, uh, this electrical con connector, uh, what it does is it communicates to the video source and light source, and also the, it processes the video, the, the connections that process video go through there. Um, this, all, all of our endoscopes are air and water tight. And so when this needs to be processed, it's going to be going into detergent and different types of cleaning fluids. And this is called an air water cap. It goes over this and locks down, and that enables us to clean, this, to clean the scope without getting any kind of fluid invasion in the scope. The other thing about the, elect the electrical connector here is this is where the suction hose hooks up to it so we can suck fluid out. This is we'll, we'll go to a suction device. This little connector here is the, uh, the auxiliary water inlet. And what it does is it enables us to squirt water out of the tip of the scope as, to uh, clean an area that we're trying to look at. The uh, other, this is a little post here that we don't really use here, but it's a grounding post. And this connector here is um, where the CO2 and water uh, come from uh, the water bottle and the CO2 tank, and they connect here. This little short device here is called an air pipe, and that's in case we need to uh, push air through the scope. There's an air pump located on our light source. And if we hit the light source button, it will shoot air through here and out the end of the scope. This long tube is called the light guide tube. Now the light guide tube has um, fiber optics in it. And those fiber optics go down what's called the light guide channel here. They go through the control handle down to the tip of the scope, and you can't see these right here, but there's two what I call headlights on the scope. And those two headlights uh, illuminate whatever we're, we're trying to see inside the body, because it's pretty dark in there. The only other thing on this scope that I can tell you about at the moment is that whenever it is processed, uh, in high level disinfection, by the way, uh, the scope uh, is a tag attached to it. The, the tag identifies the scope, what the, the serial number of the scope, the machine that it was processed in, the date, and the time that it was processed. Now, this kind of looks, this little green bag that's attached to it, looks kind of like a avocado bag. In fact, that's what we call them. And it has the valves that belong to this scope. In other words, um, these valves will follow the scope everywhere it goes unless one of them has a problem, then we'll replace it. But each scope has its own set of valves that it belongs to. And that pretty much sums up everything I can tell you right now about the gastroscope. Like I say, this is a series 180 scope. Uh, we also have a series 190 scope. The difference is a 190 scope has a little different connector and I'll show you that on the next scope.